Good morning, seventh graders. So today is Thursday, March, so hang on, let's see, 19th, March 19th, if we are doing this correctly. Uh, today we're going to continue with Manifest Destiny, lesson 15. Uh, you guys need your interactive notebook, your notebook, and your textbook. Also, um, I'm assuming you already went to Google Classroom, but if you haven't, please go to Google Classroom where all of the material is um, located here but before we do if you haven't already yesterday i provided you with my notebook pages so you could take a look at what i did in my notebook and i also showed you my interactive notebook but in case that wasn't very helpful uh here are again the solutions to your interactive notebook okay so we did this section yesterday we answered those questions you saw my answers to these questions already but if you like this better because you know it's not my handwriting uh, maybe this is more helpful feel free to stop the video and to take a look at your results well guys online learning uh, requires a lot of responsibility you can either learn a lot or kind of skim through stuff and not learn anything this is really on you folks so make sure you take a minute to take a look at what you said and also make sure you got the right answers all right, so this is the answer to number two. What was Napoleon's plan for Louisiana? Then for number three, what deal was made? And we talked about this purchase earlier in one of our classes back in February, I'm assuming. So this should sound familiar. Okay, then you have to make a pro and contra list. Again, you saw mine yesterday, but in case it's easier to see it like this. All right. Feel free to pause the video or just to skip ahead if you already got this. All right. So this is interesting. We can't have a discussion, obviously, face to face, at least not at this point in time. So what I would like you guys to do, in order to answer the question, was the U.S. expansion into the Louisiana Territory justifiable? Um, again, we're talking about this territory that we bought from France. Do you believe that was morally okay, that was uh, justifiable to buy this land? If you agree with this or disagree, think about reasons why you agree or disagree. Why do you think it's justifiable or not justifiable? Okay, if you take a look at this document that I shared with you, Remote Teaching Thursday, you have a link here, Padlet Response. To follow this link, you will have to probably sign up, use your Google school email, and then make sure you use your actual name. I can't give credit to nicknames, right, because I don't know who you are. So make sure you have your full name, as we have... Uh, a few people with the same names um, and then you will simply click on the plus here and then you will add a padlet okay so mine automatically says mary hunter in case your name does not appear correctly make sure you switch it okay so you're answering the first question here was u.s expansion into the louisiana territory justifiable so make sure you add number one the u.s expansion into the Louisiana territory was or maybe you're saying was not justifiable because and now this is where you're writing five sentences give me give me evidence from the reading maybe you have to go back to the textbook look over those pages again on page uh, that was 280 in my textbook in the newer one. So maybe you have to go over it again. Again, give me good, solid reasons why you believe it was justifiable or not. Okay, so you will create three of these padlets. So you will go back and add um, more to that. Okay, once you're done with your response to the Louisiana Territory um, purchase, once you're done with that, please look around at the other Padlets and give feedback to two of your peers. Okay, so give two. Um, that could be maybe you're elaborating or you're adding on. 
uh, if you're challenging a peer's answer, make sure you're being kind. Okay, no put downs whatsoever. Make sure it is um, useful, whatever you're adding. All right, so once you've done that with the Padlet here, you gave me at least uh, five sentences, solid evidence. We are continuing with our slideshow. All right, again, we cannot act out anything, but at this point in your notebook, just like before, please write the title Florida. So in your notebook, you've already created one of these abstracts of the United States. The last one was for the Louisiana Purchase. Right now you're creating one for Florida. So go ahead and add this abstract. Um, and then just like last time, indicate few important locations. So circle Florida, write down Georgia, find Washington DC again. Okay, we don't need volunteers as we can't actually act this out, but let's follow along just like last time. Okay. So for the rest of the class, when the narrator says audience, you need to say govern or get out. Well, if you don't feel funny, go ahead and yell at your computer. Um, I won't hear you, nor will I judge you. Okay, uh, practice one time together. Audience, govern or get out of here. <laughs> All right, I can imagine us saying that out loud in class. I'm not sure if you guys will do that in front of your computer. We'll see. Okay, now let's begin. All right, in the early 1800s, Florida was controlled by Spain. Sometimes Seminole Indians from Florida would cross the border, raid U.S. lands, and escape back into Florida. All right, sometimes slaves from Georgia would escape to Florida, where Seminole Indians would hide them. Oh, guys, you remember that? We talked about that um, during the Indian removal. We talked about black Seminoles. We talked about how, escapes, uh, how slaves would escape and try to hide in Florida and become actually part of the Seminole Indians. The Spanish governor government seemed to have no control over its territory. Years later, problems with the Seminoles continued. In 1880, 18, President Monroe called for General Andrew Jackson. I need to speak with General Jackson. Monroe ordered Jackson to chase the Seminoles back into Florida. He added, however, do not invade Florida. Chase the Seminoles back into Florida, but do not invade Florida. Government officials in Spain were furious and wanted General Jackson punished. President Monroe said, I fear there will be war between the United States and Spain. Monroe went to his cabinet and asked, what should I do? The cabinet members said, remove Jackson and apologize to Spain. One cabinet member, Secretary of State John Quincy Adams, disagreed. He took President Monroe's, uh, Monroe aside and quietly explained his plan. Adams convinced Monroe to stand firm and send a loud and clear message to Spain. Govern or get out. Okay. Adams' plan worked. Rather than risk war with the United States, Spain decided to get out. Adams sat down and wrote the treaty which bears his name and gave us Florida. Okay, good. So this is how we acquired Florida. We basically challenged Spain to either govern the territory or get, that, get out, right? So we ended up with a treaty. Good, so we are reading section Let's see, in my book, it is section three, Florida. It is on page 282. So this is in your textbook. Feel free to pause the video here uh, and go ahead and read that section. Again, on 282. Good. When you're done with reading, so again, I'm assuming you just paused the video. You took those five minutes to read. So once you're done with the reading, Please go ahead to your interactive notebook. We are on page 142 
and we're answering the question, what did President Monroe order Andrew Jackson to do in 1818? What did Jackson do instead? And number two, explain the deal that the United States made with Spain in 1819 to end the conflict over Florida. All right, guys, pause the video here, answer those two questions in your interactive notebook. I am totally aware that you guys can just skip ahead and look at the answers. The thing though is you're not learning much by doing that. You pause the video, you answered the questions to section three. Now let's take a look at what you should have been writing in your interactive notebook. Let's share the answers. So the first question was, what did President Monroe order Andrew Jackson to do in 1818? Uh, he ordered President, sorry, President Monroe ordered Jackson to chase raiding Seminole Indians back into Florida, but not to invade Florida. What did Jackson do instead? Instead, Jackson invaded Florida, captured military forts, executed two British subjects for stirring up Indian attacks, and replaced the Spanish governor. All right, go ahead and pause the video. Good. Then, question number two. Explain the deal that the United States made with Spain in 1819 to end the conflict over Florida. Spain agreed to leave Florida. The United States agreed to pay $5 million in settler's claims and to honor Spain's claim to Texas. All right. Again, pause the video if you need a minute. Otherwise, we're moving on. Okay, so just like before, the question that we're going to answer now is, do you believe that the U.S. expansion into Florida was justifiable? So we talked about the Louisiana Purchase. Now we're talking about the Florida Purchase down here. So do you believe that the U.S.'s expansion into Florida was A-OK? -okay? Again, we're answering that question on the Padlet. I shared that link with you right here, okay? It's the exact same link. So you will get to the same Padlet. So you will have to add another, another post. Again, make sure it's your full name, add number two. Okay, so add title number two, the U.S expansion into Florida was or was not justifiable. Again, that's a five sentence answer. Make sure you back up your answer, your reasoning with evidence from the text that you read. And then once you're done with your post, go ahead and add comments to question, question number two, to other group members. Okay, so take a look at your peers' posts, what did they say? and give them feedback, elaborate, and so forth. Again, remember to be kind, please. Good. Uh, remember also, this is a graded activity, so I will check this Padlet and see um, your participation. Good. Now, once you answer that question, let's move on. That's just a good picture. <laughs> let's move on with our presentation. Maybe go ahead and pause the presentation if you need a minute. Otherwise, we're moving on. Okay, so now we're going to talk about the Texas Territory. Hang on. All right, here's Texas, right? We talked about Florida. We talked about the Louisiana Purchase. Now we're moving on to Texas. So the U.S. just promised Spain to leave them and Texas alone. Hmm, that didn't last long. All right, so in your notebook, just like before, please write the title Texas. So go ahead and write it, uh, the title Texas. Okay, and then we are also going to add key locations. We're going to add Missouri, obviously Texas. You got to be aware of Texas, Mexico City. Uh, okay, let's just draw that outside of our little uh, graphic. Okay, but we do not need any volunteers because clearly we're not in the classroom. Okay, feel free to pause here, to take a minute to um, draw this. Once you have it, let's move on. 
All right, practice one time together. Audience, remember the Alamo. Hmm, I'm sure you've heard the story about the Alamo, maybe. Okay, let's get started. In 1821, Stephen F. Austin moved to Texas to follow his father's dream of starting a U.S. colony in this territory now controlled by Mexico. By 1830, thousands of American settlers had joined Austin. Some even moved to Texas illegally. Because of the illegal immigrants in Texas and other problems with the Americans, Mexican government official, officials ordered Texas closed to Americans. Some American settlers claimed unfair and called for revolution. Stephen F. Austin calmed his fellow American settlers, now called Texans, and said he would travel to Mexico City to negotiate with the government. Calm yourselves, Texans. I will travel to Mexico City to negotiate with the government. When Austin arrived, he met with the new Mexican leader, General Santa Ana. First, Austin said, reopen Texas. Then he said, make Texas its own state. Santa Ana ignored him and jailed Austin for causing a rebellion. Two years later, when Austin was released from jail, the Texans were still unhappy. They rose up in revolt. Furious, Santa Ana and his army marched to Texas to crush the rebellion. The worst battle from the Texans was at the Alamo, where every Texan was killed. This only spurred on American supporters who flooded into Texas to help and cried, Remember the Alamo! Just one month later, Santa Ana and his troops were sleeping in the afternoon near a river. Suddenly, Santa Ana and his troops were awoken by the charge of the Texans. Audience, well, we should be yelling, Remember the Alamo! Uh, okay, <laughs> there we go. The Texans won the battle and captured Santa Ana. Mexican rule in Texas ended and Texas became an independent country. Many wondered for how long, but for now the Texans cheered their victory and the new Republic of Texas. Okay, so just like before, go ahead, open up your textbook. We're on page 283 all the way to 285. So we're reading three pages. So at this point, you're going to pause the video, open up the textbook, read the section called Texas on page 283, all the way to 285. Again, if you're choosing not to read this, you will be lacking a lot of background knowledge and you are hurting yourself. So take those five minutes, those 10 minutes, even 15 minutes to read those three pages so that you have all the information that you need. All right. So I'm assuming you paused this. I'm assuming you read those three pages. Good. Let's go to the interactive notebook. We're going to take a look at section four. Well, in my interactive notebook, it's called section three. We are listing two complaints of American settlers in Texas in 1830. Then we are listing two complaints um, of the Tejanos. All right, pause the video, do that really quickly. Good, then we're going to look at this timeline. On page 143 in your interactive notebook, you have a word bank. So go ahead and complete the timeline with the important events that led Texas to win its independence. Write a one or two sentence summary next to each date. Use all of the words in the word bank somewhere on the timeline. Also create illustrations for two of the events. Okay guys, again, you are going to turn these pages into me. So make sure it's, I can read it. Uh, also make sure it's in complete sentences. And then you're also going to answer question three. What happened to Texas in 1845? Give one argument against and one argument in favor of this decision. At this point, again, pause the video, take those five, 10 or 15 minutes to do this activity and then unpause. Good. I'm assuming you did this faithfully. Let's share our answers. 
So what were some of the uh, complaints the American settlers had in Texas? So Americans were used to governing themselves and did not want to take orders from the Mexican government. All official documents had to be in Spanish. Mexico outlawed slavery in 1829, and many Americans in Texas were slaveholders. All right. Tejanos were upset that many Americans had settled in Texas illegally. Americans showed little respect for Mexican culture, and many Americans had no intention of becoming citizens. Again, if you have to, go ahead and pause the video. Then we completed a timeline using the word bank. Well, let's load this and then enlarge it. Here we go. Again, go ahead and pause the video to double check your answers. Make sure you answered in complete sentences. Obviously, here I did not add the illustrations. So make sure you have two illustrations for two events. Okay, so two illustrations somewhere here. Okay, and now we are back to the Padlet. So we're talking about Texas this time. The question again is, was the U.S. expansion into Texas justifiable? Was it A-OK? -okay? So again, to get to the Padlet, you are, maybe you still have it open just like me. If you don't, go to my document and click on the Padlet link here. So this will be your third response here. Okay. Uh, let's actually trash this. Remember, click on the plus button. You will create a new Padlet. So overall, you are creating three Padlets at the number. Uh, and then tell me if the expansion into the Texas territory, was it justifiable or was it not? Write five complete sentences. Back up your reasoning with evidence from the text. Once you're done with your post, Go ahead and comment on two other responses, add or elaborate or give feedback to your peers. And as always, if you're giving feedback, make sure it's useful, it's positive. Good. Once you've got this, man, this is almost the end of our lesson today. Uh, let's go back to our lesson here. So today you learned about the Louisiana Territory. Florida territory and the Texas um, territory and how we gained that territory. You also participated in discussions, obviously not in class discussions as we usually do, but you participated on the Padlet. So you should have added three responses to the Padlet. Okay, so this is it for today. Please remember to also, um, on Google Classroom, you are taking a picture of your notebook and you will take a picture of your interactive notebook and you will submit those to me um, ideally on Thursday. If you need more time, Friday would be okay. Okay. All right. I'll see you soon, guys.